The purpose of this briefing is to announce the deployment uh, of our newest technology to assist us with our gun crime reduction efforts. Uh, joining me today is, of course, Mayor Steve Benjamin, Councilman Duvall, Councilman Davis, and Councilman McDowell. Um, all, each one of uh, our, our council members have um, been instrumental in making this happen, and uh, especially for Councilman Davis and um, Councilman McDowell, it um, affects their constituents, especially um, they represent many of the neighborhoods that are most affected by violent crime, and I think it's most fitting that they are here today to um, join us in this announcement. So as you know and frequently hear from me, we have a gun crime problem in Columbia, a problem that we cannot solve alone. It requires a multifaceted approach, emphasizing collaboration, law enforcement partnerships, positive trusting relationships with our citizens, education, prevention, and strong law enforcement, enforcement efforts, effective gun laws, and of course technology. We know that we have great law enforcement partnerships at every level, at the local, state, and federal level. We have initiated effective and innovative initiatives such as Ceasefire Columbia, our violent offender call-in, um, Project Safe Neighborhood Initiative, Operation Real Time, our point of arrest federal case adoption program with, uh, with our partners with ATF, the Midlands Gang Task Force, an award-winning model task force um, throughout the state, um, our gun task force that just in the last year, you've, you've heard us um, give updates where we've um, seized well over a thousand guns in the last year. Um, utilizing NIBIN um, our, in our initiation of a, and creation of a gun crime intelligence unit here at the police department. We've advocated for common sense gun laws, uh, graduated sentencing, uh, felons in possession matching federal statutes, universal and standard background checks, um, laws that address prohibiting people that suffer from mental illness and drug addiction from possessing firearms. We've taken bold steps locally with the bump stock ban. We continuously educate the public on responsible gun ownership, securing their weapons, not leaving weapons in, in their vehicles unsecured, and then reporting stolen weapons. And we always are seeking the best technology to, to be a force multiplier for us. In September of 2018, the Columbia City Council unanimously supported the funding for the police department to acquire and purchase shot spotter gunshot tech, uh, detection technology. This technology allows us to respond consistently, precisely, and quickly to gunfire events. Many of the events would go unreported if not for this technology, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Responding to all gunfire events is critically important to improving the quality of life for communities that have been most affected by gun violence. It further goes a long way in building institutional trust in, in the police. So what is ShotSpotter? ShotSpotter is a gunshot detection technology that uses sophisticated acoustic sensors to detect, locate, and alert law enforcement and security person, personnel about illegal gunfire incidents in real time. In real time is what's important. Who uses ShotSpotter? Well, we're the only city in, in the state of South Carolina that's currently using ShotSpotter technology. Um, there's a host of other cities to include Oakland, San Diego, Chicago, Atlanta, Miami, New York City, Pittsburgh. Um, and on our fact sheet that's provided, it gives um, a list of over 85 cities throughout the country that are using this technology. So how does ShotSpotter work? It uses acoustic sensors that are strategically placed in an array of locations. Um, approximately 20 sensors are per square mile. We have six square miles here in Columbia. The sensors are connected wirelessly to ShotSpotter's centralized cloud-based um, operations center. They detect verify and triangulate the gunshots. The acoustic uh, analysts locate um, where it occurred and they process that in about 45 seconds. They then send that real time to the police officers in the field and to the dispatch. All of our police officers uh, in Columbia have smartphones that are issued to them. 
they also have laptop computers in the car. Uh, this technology with them sends the gunshot alerts within 45 seconds to those um, smartphones and laptops. How does Shot Spotter help law enforcement? Shot Spotter protects officers by rapidly notifying them of gunshot crimes in progress with real time data. And we're going to demonstrate that for you in just a second. Officers are able to quickly arrive at a scene of a gun crime. It increases their safety um, on how they approach. Uh, they can approach more strategically. Apprehensions go up. Uh, the ability to recover evidence uh, goes up significantly. Shot, spot, shot Spotter provides tremendous value to the citizens that we serve. It saves lives. It improves the quality of life in neighborhoods. And, it, and as I said, it improves officer safety, our number one mission. Furthermore, it reduces health care costs associated with gunshot um, injuries and in treatment at the hospital. Over $80 billion a year um, goes to treating people suffering from gunshot wounds across the country, and we believe that this will have a direct impact on that. We believe that we'll be able to measurably reduce gun violence and improve public safety and in the process enhance the resiliency of communities that we serve. Here's our protocol on how we how we respond to a shot spotter alert. The gunfire is detected. If, if you all don't mind just stepping in, there you go. This is, this is, no, you're good right here, man. So this is what our officers see. Gunshot, uh, gunfire is detected, and within 45 seconds of that detection, um, it shows up on their phone and in their car. It, they can pull up a street view of where it's occurring. That's the building internet, not what's in the car. <laughs> Where's that table we need? Right. Yeah. You can go back to the. They can listen to the um, gunfire. This was just the other day. Um, and on Weston Avenue and um, although we know gunfire oftentimes goes unreported I can um, say with certainty that this incident was reported because our councilman reported it directly to us when he heard it um, and there was an alert we responded to the scene um, collected valuable evidence in, in this particular situation and it's connected to some other shootings that we've had so we um, and if this street view comes up, I'll, I'll explain the importance of that. But the officers are able to pull up a street view. They can they can determine what the best um, approach is for the for the gunfire. Um, they can um, identify avenues of escape. Um, so it, it ups our ability to have apprehensions, and then for them to safely approach. Um, there is a they can also click on a on an icon that will give them a more detailed report and it'll also give them turn-by-turn um, -turn directions. Once they're on scene, uh, they obviously um, uh, go to the, where the coordinates take them. They collect evidence. Uh, this is a, an example of the evidence that they've collected at the scenes. Um, they look to see if they can identify witnesses. And anywhere there's line of sight from where the alert located locates they hang door hangers that says the police were here investigating gunfire and we need your help and um, not only do we know that gunfire goes unreported about 75 percent of the time um, we know that that occurs because of a lot of reasons one being a lack of trust and we we think that this is going to create trust uh, with the communities that we serve that we are going to show up and it does matter we do need their help in solving crimes. So let me tell you um, real quickly about what we have seen in 21 days. 
so what's what's in front of you today represents 21 days of shot spotter being live we went live april 18th and this is as of 5 a.m yesterday we've had 131 um, shot spotter alerts of those alerts they've detected 339 shots being fired in our city we've seized 11 firearms two of those firearms are stolen we've collected 114 shell casings from 32 different crime scenes we've made 23 um, submissions to the national In integrated ballistics information network nobin that's what connects shootings for us um, we've had not or we've had five confirmations already through nobin that links um, an incident to multiple incidents and multiple weapons we've arrested 13 people um, and they've been charged with 21 charges but here's the part that um, is what we got to improve upon and why this technology is important we had 101 131 activations meaning we detected gunfire and officers were alerted within 45 seconds of those only 26 times did a citizen call 911 to report gunfire which is exactly what um, what shot spotter was telling us when we were researching this product so we have to reinforce this to our citizens if you see something say something we are all partners in reducing gun crime in our city mayor I want to thank Chief Holbrook and the men and women of the uh, City of Columbia Police Department for the incredible work they do every single day uh, serving as public guardians uh, for the people of, of Columbia. I want to say thank you to our, 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 our council, Councilman Duval, Councilman McDowell, Councilman Davis, and all of our colleagues uh, and our city manager. Uh, this is a unanimous decision of City Council uh, to make this investment in, in ShotSpotter, which we in, indeed believe will save lives and make our, our city uh, safer. Uh, all across America, we have uh, over 300 million firearms floating across porous borders. Uh, our city is, uh, is, uh, is atypical. Uh, we, we have uh, a major issue with both uh, with, with illegal firearms. Uh, and being able to leverage uh, significant public support, which we believe will grow as we continue to deploy uh, this uh, technology surrounded by the uh, activities of our, of our police department, uh, but using smart city technology, using uh, data uh, uh, to, to help uh, serve as a, as a force multiplier for the great work that these men and women do every single day is a win uh, for the city. And we're looking for good things uh, to come uh, from this new partnership between the Columbia Police Department and ShotSpotter. Uh, the Chief mentioned the, the collaborative efforts uh, that he and Sheriff Lott have been in, in, in involved in uh, from April to April, over 1,463 guns taken off the streets. Uh, of, of, of the Midlands, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a huge win. A huge win and a, and a move in the right direction. We've got to do more. We've got the right team in place, uh, the leadership team under, under, under Chief Holbrook, and we want to make sure um, that the public knows that, that uh, he has the full um, faith and support of our city council and city leadership. Thank you. So I'd be glad to answer uh, any questions anybody might have. <coughs> quite frequently actually and uh, that's that's why um, technology has been such a mul uh, force multiplier for law enforcement just in the, in the last few years um, I've said uh, in regards to knob and technology that's probably um, the greatest technology that's come along since DNA in, in law enforcement and um, that's that's why us knowing when a when gunfire occurs um, and, and being able to respond and collect that valuable piece of evidence that really um, helps us connect dots to crimes and people. So we may not catch you today, but we will link today to tomorrow when we do catch you, and we make sure that we build a stronger case to make sure you go to jail and we hold people accountable. Yes, sir. How quick is the response time been so far on these incidents that we call the shots Well, as I said, the, the alert gets to the officers in about 45 seconds, and 
and then um, as far as our response being on scene, it's it's, it's really based on where the lo where the officer's located at, at the time. Um, the other thing that it does by going directly to the officer is even if an officer is en route to another call um, or on a call, it, it helps keep them safer and they may be in a position to respond. They could be working a wreck right around the corner and because they are sh showing being tied up, the call may go to a, a unit that's farther away, but since they got an instantaneous alert, they might be able to take immediate action and it might lead to an apprehension. Could you, could you address the obvious uh, problems with uh, reporting? You say in the paperwork that it doesn't report anything with gunshots. How does that work so people know their civil liberties aren't going out the window if they walk by the sensor or not know it? Uh, that's a great question. The, the acoustic equipment uh, detects the gunfire, it does not record or detect conversations, um, and it also does not video. Um, this, is, this is strictly uh, an analysis of, you know, that, um, that decibel level that's created by, by gunfire. Okay, that said, you've got recordings of gunfire, is that something ballistically that can be used to make a case later, or is this technology not far enough to figure out that X gun fired those bullets in that location if you pull that gun later on? No, they, they it is advanced to the point where they can analyze the, um, you know, that particular sound and, and tell us what type of caliber of weapon for the most part, um, not 100% of the time, for most of the time they can tell us what type of caliber is being fired and they can also distinguish between an automatic uh, weapon and semi-automatic and if different weapons of different calibers are being being used, multiple weapons being used, and they can also tell if, like if a, if a weapon's being fired from a vehicle, directionally where the where the uh, gunfire is coming from and going to. All right. So your officers arrive on scene. The shooter's still there. They return fire at some point. Is that assailant shooting to them? Does that help? With evidence, say our officers did the right thing, just like their body cams. Is that part it, of this too? Uh, it, it, it's it's part of uh, part of the narrative, absolutely. Where are you going to expand this program? You've got six square miles. You got a lot more city to cover. Well, that would certainly be uh, um, what we well, would. The answer, uh, the answer is yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, let me say one more thing. Um, don't get anywhere. Uh, the I've said it before, and, and some of you have, have uh, taken note. Uh, this department is on the leading edge of 21st century policing uh, across the country. Uh, Chief Holbrook, Deputy Chief Kelly, uh, the, the work that's being done here at the City of Columbia Police Department in, in, in seeking data-driven solutions to some complex problems. Uh, surrounding it with, with, with real accountability and transparency, uh, they, are, they are ahead of the curve. And I, and I hear that everywhere we go, we've had the opportunities to travel to different cities and states and interface with law enforcement professionals all across this country in the federal, state, and, and, and local level. And I, I, I don't want it to be uh, lost on anyone here that, uh, that our chief is, is, is uh, in the front of, of the parade doing some amazing things uh, that, that's being recognized. Um, by his colleagues and, 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 and peers all across the country. Uh, data helps you make much better decisions, and, and God we trust. Everyone else bring me data, right? Yes, sir. All right. Well, thank you for that. We've got a great team at the police department, tremendous support from, from our, our council, and we've got, we've got a lot of work to do. So, yes, ma'am. I believe so, and, and, and also would say I believe it's who you ask. Um, I can tell you that um, perception is reality in, in North Columbia. Uh, folks live it every day, and that's, that's not what uh, anybody should have to put up with, and it's certainly not the expectations we have for uh, uh, the quality of life that um, everybody deserves in Columbia. Uh, strictly data driven. We, um, the area that we've defined is based on where we have the highest concentrations of gun crime. Um, so 
we want to affect that and change change that narrative and change that footprint it would be nice to where we reduce it to the point where we don't need this but um, hopefully um, you know we'll continue to define our different areas and hopefully we can expand this this initiative further where, where are those areas with the highest concentration of teachers in general? I'll just tell you generally speaking it's, it's North Columbia, North Columbia. yes I think I think those areas are, are highlighted in your previous internal uh, reports as well. Public, they are. public reports on, on yeah, the city website. Yeah. Um, let me ask a couple of questions here that will all lead into each other, and I think everybody can benefit from. Do you have any officers that are trained to monitor? It sounds like come in, or is all that shot to, uh, or is all that thrown to shot spotters? Good question. It, it is it is all uh, done by shot spotter. They have the uh, acoustic uh, analysts that take the information in, they, they listen to it, and th that's what they do within 45 seconds of pushing that back out to us. Okay, so no, no uh, officers here sort of trained or monitored no. or anything, that's all shots box. Okay, um, one thing that might be a little longer but I think would be useful, have there been any prominent cases that we in media have written about, done any stories on where this is factored in? If the answer's no, that's okay. I'm just curious. Well, have you done a prominent story in the last 21 days? Well, we've done <laughs> okay, uh, th you know we're 21 days into this. I can tell you that we have, um, you know, we have four alerts that are related to eight cases. It's it's all the same. It's tied into a group uh, of people that. Um, and one thing that I think was important that I, I I failed to mention, this is this technology is something we're sharing with um, with the Richland County. Sure. Um, this obviously they we have donut holes we deal with some of the areas that this that this covers um, it is that situation where the city's on one side of the street the county's on the other we have great cooperation from the officers on the ground and um, it's it's led to significant recovery of evidence that has um, there was a, a recent case where there were some juveniles arrested that were responsible for a number of shootings that were shot spot or alerts and they were also responsible for a number of car break-ins a um, couple more, um, and these all kind of fit together here. Um, so gun crime or shot fired in Columbia um, in recent years, what's the trajectory? Has it been going up some? Has it been going down, or is it about flat? You know, one of, we have not seen uh, precipitous increases, but what we have seen is consistent levels that are over two times the national average when it when it comes to violent crime so okay. that's been steady for over the last 10 years what we can say uh, we're, where we're heading in a positive direction last year we had um, a reduction of about 20 percent in aggravated assault <coughs> people being hit by gunfire that's that's promising we had an uptick in, in homicides but what the what we really pay attention to is People struck by gunfire, aggravated assaults, and we saw a reduction. And we're we're tracking about a two percent reduction right now, year to date. Okay, so that twenty percent reduction was from last year into this year. Like that would be calendar year last year. Okay. Year, year to date, we're okay. about two percent okay. down. Uh, all right. So I was going to ask if it's about down or flat. So I read up on the technology. Um, obviously, the intent is to reduce gun crime overall. Um, the CEO says that it won't do that alone of the company. Uh, you listed a number of other things that it has um, got here, but I wanted you to maybe explain those maybe a little more. Um, so beyond just the goal of reducing gun crime, just go into some of the other goals. Well, I think I think we have to continue to build trust in the community. You know, we can we we can go um, respond to a call, but what we need and we can collect evidence, but you know, we want to get to the point where. That citizen that says, "I'm, you know, I'm sick and tired of this going on in my neighborhood," and that's the person that pulled that trigger, um, and we put some people in jail. Anything else? I mean, I guess all of it's tied up. Investigations to um, make these better, uh, more arrests. I guess getting guns off the street. It's where all that stuff. Well, it's getting it, it's it's getting guns off the street. It's continuing to educate um, our citizens to be responsible gun owners. But to me, it's getting the right people off the street. It's it's getting those trigger pullers off the street, um, so we, you know, we can spend time interacting with the public in non enforcement um, non enforcement ways. So just a quick follow up on that. Um, 
when you say building trust, because that seems to be the sort of priority or the top thing you think about beyond just reducing gun crime. How is it, I, I'm kind of a little disconnected on how sort of the new technology built in. Because students, like, they can say, hey, look at what we're, you can say, hey, look at what we're doing, or is it because they know you can be more accurate or reliable with your investigations? What's, what's, how does it factor in building trust? Well, I, I think if you've, I think if you've, you've grown up with gunfire being just a um, part of everyday life and you, the police aren't, aren't there investigating or, or showing up, uh, there's a sense that um, uh, maybe they don't care. Um, so it leads to a community being disenfranchised, um, over-policed for the wrong reasons. And, you know, to me, this, we, we talk about um, being strategic um, and very direct in enforcement, identifying the right people that are causing the problems, the trigger pullers. And um, this, this helps us drill down and be more focused on the, the right people in the right places and for the right reasons. Okay, excellent. So yeah, uh, that, that makes total sense. So you're there, it allows you to show up to the communities that you might not have shown up to before because maybe nobody's calling. So Correct. Excellent. Okay, that's all I got, appreciate it. Chief, talk, talk about the enforcement. Think back on this question of your office being sent to the exact location rather than have somebody call in and say we've had shots fired in our neighborhood. You wouldn't have had all this evidence if it had been just a, a normal call. Well, you know, that that's, that's a good point too, Mr. Duvall. You know, oftentimes when we do get that call of, a, of gunfire, it's somebody that that's, thinks they might have heard a shot, but um, it's it's not accurate. You know, it depends on trees and buildings, and you know, it could have been a backfire. But you know, if you report something and you don't see a police or you don't get an outcome um, or feel like there's follow up, then that leads to distrust and feeling disenfranchised too. This, this, is, this is not what we would consider portable technology like some of the other things that we have. It is, um, it's, gonna, it's part of the infrastructure um, that, that we're building out. So as, as the city may expand their financing, then the technology will expand? Yes. <laughs> Mayor, you want yeah. to make a comment about that? Chief, yeah, he, he, Chief had us at hello. I mean, uh, we um, we stepped up uh, and made this investment uh, based on the um, compelling data uh, that we needed to make sure that even in, in the absence of citizens calling in, uh, that we could use the data to, to make a difference. Uh, in less than a month, we're, we're seeing that promise. We're going through the budget uh, process now, uh, and I, I anticipate that um, as as we move forward, we'll expand this system across across the city. Uh, when did y'all approve like September of 2018 okay. well, it was it was when it was authorized and then the um, the mapping and engineering took place until until sure. April and when we went April. yes and these weapons and shell casings are actual returns on this investment right now that's correct 21 days, 21 days. so um, matter of personal privilege thank thank you all very much for supporting this endeavor um, I think it's a game changer for us um, thank you all for taking the time to come and let us share this with you